This is my first sculpt ever. I did it in 2013 using ZBrush. I don't think I even knew that digital sculpting was a thing before this one. This is a Halloween scene that I did for a competition in 2014. Here's another competition piece that I did for Christmas of 2014. This one I believe is in 2015. I really like this one. It's so messed up. It was my first artwork that did pretty well on ArtStation at the time. Okay, so from 2012... The first year I ever did 3D modeling till 2016, I mostly did basic 3D modeling. Things like props, environments, animations, I didn't really do much character stuff. And in the rare cases I did, it was mostly box modeling, not really sculpting. It wasn't until 2016 that I started pursuing anything character related. That's when I started truly learning how to create characters and sculpt them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I approached learning throughout these years from 2016 to 2019. And I'll also give you advice on what I wish I knew right from the start because that would have made a difference. I'm going to continue showing you my sculpts in the background throughout the years and talk about each specific year, what I did and what I learned from it. So in 2016, I grabbed myself some anatomy resources, books and otherwise and started sculpting frequently. My main focus was getting in the mileage. I didn't care about getting final polished characters and to be honest, I still don't. This is why most of my sculpts are speed sculpts and why you're gonna see quite a few sculpts throughout the years. I try not to get lost in details and polishing so that I can get down the fundamentals first and build a solid base. This one is probably my strongest piece in 2016 that I called Yokai as in spirits. It's a lot more polished than the rest of my work because I did it for a competition, but it also took a lot longer than the rest. So keep in mind that one piece of art doesn't necessarily represent your skill as an artist at that point. That might sound obvious, but at times when you compare your current work with your older ones, you might find that the older ones are better. That doesn't necessarily mean you got worse, you know, other things can be taken into account as well, like how long you actually spent on that work compared to today's artwork. By the end of 2016, I realized that my biggest mistake from 2012 till 2015 is not knowing exactly what I wanted to do. Only in 2016 did I start truly improving because my goals became clearer. I knew I wanted to learn how to create characters. I wanted to be really good at it. So my focus was not scattered all over the place anymore. Being undecisive is probably one of the worst traits you can have as an artist. Actually, as a person in general, if you want to achieve anything, you have to deal with that. Sometimes you have to force yourself to make decisions so that you can move on. The start of 2017 was a bit similar to 2016. I continued doing speed sculpts with the occasional longer sculpts for the channel, but I kept it short nonetheless. It wasn't until late 2017 when things started to change. Around the end of that year, I decided to learn how to draw and take it seriously. I think it was at the 1st of July of 2017 when I decided to draw every single day. Well, actually I decided before that, but that's when I started. And I still do up until today. Interestingly enough, it made a huge impact to my sculpts. This is probably one of the best decisions I've made as an artist, learning how to draw. So in 2017, I realized how important mileage is. Without a doubt, the more work you put into something, the better you get. However, it's not as simple as that. This really works well when you're a beginner. The more you get advanced, the more complicated it gets, but we'll get more into that later in the video. Also, I noticed that whatever I did frequently became easier to do, meaning that if I practiced every day, it becomes easier and requires less effort to continue practicing every day as opposed to practicing in chunks. So if you have 7 hours to spare per week, I think it's better to practice 1 hour per day instead of 7 hours 1 day per week you'll probably last a lot longer. Learning that during that year made it a lot easier to get into drawing every single day. Even though it was really hard to stick to it at first, I knew that if I forced myself, it will end up getting easier and will require almost no effort or become second nature. And it did. In 2018, things started getting interesting and fun. As I got better, I got the hang of things and my skill sets improved. I was able to create what I wanted. I had a lot more freedom in creating what I imagined. This made creating characters a lot more fun. As it got more fun, my motivation increased. I wanted to learn more. Look, art didn't start as a passion for me. Now I can safely say that I do what I'm passionate about every single day. Learning became fun, creating became fun. It wasn't a grind anymore. I started finding fun ways to practice. An example would be creating character fan arts from shows that I love. 
and mashup of Rick from Rick and Morty and Spider-Man in a Slav squat? You got it. Chibi Spider-Man and a random cat with some fun animations? Why not? I did whatever I felt like doing, it was a blast. In addition to all of that, I started experimenting with different things, you know, different art styles and more. That was possible mostly because I got better, because I acquired more skills and I was able to do more with it. At the end of 2018, I also created some of my favorite creations up to date. Here's one of them, a fan art of Akali from the music video KDA Pop Stars, which I did post on my channel, and I sculpted both her normal and neon version. I also sculpted Spider-Man from Spider-Verse, another one of my favorite fan art sculpts. Man, that movie was so good, one of the best animations I've seen. Now, if you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're doing, dude. Seriously, or do that, go watch it. If I learned anything in 2018, it is that passion isn't something you're always born with. Sometimes it's something that comes with time. As you get better with something, you can do more with it. You can enjoy it more and have more fun with it, as long as some challenge is still present. Learning art can be one of the most frustrating things that you'll ever experience. It isn't easy, but it is also, in my opinion, one of the most rewarding things so, yeah. Knowing all of that really helps me go through all of the hard and frustrating stages when trying to learn. I know that the reward is worth it. 2019 is a turning point for me, especially at the end of it. Look, I did a lot of fun characters and fan arts throughout the year. I even got into virtual reality sculpting, which I have a video on on my channel. I'll add a link to that as well. Either way, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. It was probably one of the most stressful years out of these four years, but also one of the years I learned from the most. This is the year where I made a lot of unfinished projects. I also felt like I didn't improve as much as I wanted, and sometimes I even felt like I got worse. I also became undecisive again, and it seriously took a toll on my progress. The first half of this year, was definitely difficult. A lot of that pressure came from how fast my channel grew. I shifted my focus a bit from practicing and improving as an artist to growing my channel. You know, I still draw every day, but my sessions got a lot shorter. And even when I draw, I felt like I wasn't as focused. My focus was a bit too scattered. In addition to that, I had a lot more personal responsibilities this year, things that occupied my time. This took away more from my focus and ended up adding more stress. To make things worse, I noticed that the way I used to practice before is just not working as well anymore. That is because I got over the beginner phase. Now as beginners, we have a lot to learn and absorb, so even if we don't practice in the most efficient way, we're still gonna improve a lot as long as we put in the mileage and practice frequently. This holds true for a lot of different things. For example, if you weightlift the first year, you're gonna get some gains. It doesn't matter if your workout isn't really that efficient. But once you get over that year, that's when things start getting really tricky. Okay, so at a point I got fed up, so I decided to take a step back and reevaluate how I plan to progress from here on forward. By calmly reevaluating my whole thought process, looking at my schedule with fresh eyes and an open mind, I started figuring out my issues one by one. Whenever you are overwhelmed by so many things, the best thing you can do is break down the source of your problems one by one and deal with your issues as fast as you can so that you can get off some of that load and think clearly. So that's what I did. For example, I started looking at how I was practicing for the past four years, and I was trying to figure out which methods worked better for me and which didn't. I also did research online. I looked at scientific ways to practice efficiently, to learn efficiently. In fact, I made videos on that. I made a video talking about 20 reasons why you might not be improving, and I also made a video on scientific ways to improve faster, to learn art faster. I'll add links to these videos, you can watch them if you haven't yet. Either way, this year has been an eye-opener. I realized that no matter what, you can't ever expect things to stay linear. No matter how well things are going for you at a certain point, change will come, and you have to deal with it appropriately when it does, so, you know, try to anticipate that. Giving up has never been in the cards for me, and it shouldn't be for you either. Know that no matter what, if you're stuck, if you feel like you're not improving, if you're stressed out, whatever the reason is, there's always a solution. You just need to take a step back, think about it, try to figure things out, and be patient because you gotta test things out. Things never work in the first time. Well, usually they don't work in the first time. So, yeah. 
I also realized how much our personal lives and well-being can affect our progress. So take care of your stress levels, okay? Take care of your health, your other aspects of your lives. Go run a bit, do some sports, go out, have fun, sleep better, okay? Yeah, I'm talking to you because you do arts and for some reason, for most people, that means no sleep. I don't know why, but you gotta sleep. You care about your art, then you should sleep, you know? I don't know. This has been my journey in the last four years and since I made a video on my art progress, I think it's time to take one of my old sculpts and re-sculpt it so uh, that we kind of see before and after. So I'm actually already working on that. I am re-sculpting Ochako that I did I think in 2018 and uh, she's coming soon. Now I wanted to release her really soon after this video but I'm currently moving apartments so well you know moving to another apartment so I'm gonna be a little busy I'm not sure when I'm gonna finish the video. I'm gonna try to release it before the end of this year but if I don't it's gonna be out at the beginning of 2020 probably like January. Anyways, uh, just make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss that video and go check the links below to go watch the other videos I talked about, you know, at the beginning of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a like and share it with your friends. Also, leave a comment below letting me know which is your favorite artwork that I did throughout these four years. I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one.